Hello everyone, and welcome to week zero of our uh, uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay uh, Enemy Within campaign, which is like a famous campaign, like world famous allegedly, like one of the best pre-written adventures ever. Um, hi, so we're going to go around the table, get everyone introduce themselves. Lauren, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Oh! Hello, I'm Lauren Danger, Twitch watcher, uh, Twitter, Lauren Danger, uh, Etsy, Danger Craftworks. I am a sword fighting professional and a leather worker, and I am excited to be on my second James Corp show, a small filler for our normal show while Rooster is having his back torn open and all those nasty things. Yeah. Hi. Jay Ah. Hi, I'm Jewel. Jewel Sevens on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, wherever really. I stream sometimes. This is my, I guess, third show. Well, it's a continuation of D and D anyway, but same slot. But yeah, I guess third show. Hero Quest, D and D, and now Warhammer Fantasy. Woo. Yeah, that is all you're getting from me. Good. I don't want anything else. Crimson or Kitty, whatever you prefer. Kitty works. Hi guys, I'm Kitty. Um, I stream on Twitch when I have the opportunity. Uh, I am CDN Crimson Kitty. The CDN stands for Canadian. Uh, you can find me there when I'm around. If not, you can pop on the Discord and find out what's going on. This is my, I guess, second. I shot at Rob. And last but not very, and not very least. The man with the glorious locks and the gorgeous beard, Claytor22. Hello, I am Ivan Boskanovich. You buy RV from me. Uh, you can find us on 111 Central Street in uh, Billings, Montana. Uh, it is great. You buy best RV. AC stuck on. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch at Claytor22. On Twitter, Clayter22, hello. Chicken loaf. You know, Billings, that's not too far. I could probably be there in about three or four hours. I'm coming on down. I would like an RV. You buy RV. Oh, yeah. Yes, I buy RV, and then I go to live in Arizona. It's supposed to be hot. It's in no problem. No problem. Okay. No problem. So today's session, look, today's session will be about three hours, because... Two of you have got to disappear in three hours, so it should be just enough time to make the characters. We might even finish just before. So I'm just going to give you... Um, how many of you know the Warhammer world? Okay, so the Warhammer world is is based from basically the Warhammer Fantasy War game that they, uh, Games Workshop did um, uh, a few years ago. It's set in uh, the old world. And the place you're set in is called the Empire, which is a very dynamic based uh, environment. Um, it's it's a Renaissance, I believe. It's just hitting the Renaissance. So there's like mm -hmm. there's like gunpowder and, and stuff, but there's also magic and stuff. But it's very low fantasy or low magic because of because it, magic is rare. Um, uh, the game is very sort of centered around humans and and basically um, the sort of uh, uh, it's a very grim world with, uh, with a lot of like bad things and you generally aren't playing like superheroic characters you're generally the run of the mill people that somehow get drawn into these um, you're like the downtrodden that gets lifted up occasionally to um, to uh, uh, stop these things from happening um, the enemy within campaign as I was saying earlier is like well it's probably older than two of you here at least early eight, mid 80s I'd say it came out in um, but yeah it's well regarded as like one of the uh, uh, best uh, pre-written adventures I'll have a look when it came out uh 86 so if any of you was born post 86 or before 86 and you're not then you're you're, you're you're older than it but if you're not jay will definitely isn't old, older than 
the game itself. Um, Jay, he's in my age. I'm Jay, the Jay, he's like 12. What is this? I'm like 54. What are you talking about? Um, I mean, Kitty's also like 12. So I get that a lot. So what the plan? What my plan is to do is we'll do this as filler until Rooster comes back. Then we'll go back to D and D, and then when Rooster tires or or wants to have a break from D and D, we will come back to this. Um, because it is it is a good campaign, and um, I I would like to definitely like do it at some point. Like fully as a full thing, okay. so we'll we'll try and get to like Bogan Huffing before before the six weeks is up. I think it's going to be about six weeks by the time we get there. Uh, well, we'll I can, see oh. how it goes. What? And go just away. remember that, uh, yeah, I'm going away. Well, I'll, I'll be in the UK, but my timing wise, uh, will be my niece and nephew will be going to bed when we normally stream, and I'll be helping read stories and stuff, so it won't work while I'm gone those two weeks. But that's. Well, we can. I mean, there's still three players, so we can still crack yeah. on if need be. Yeah, that's all right. Um, so, um, so just to let you know, so um, the first part of the campaign is kind of li a bit linear. So just go with it uh, for me. But once we get to Bogenhafen, the game will just completely open up. Um, so, um, so the way it's going to be in Warhammer. Uh, there are four races that you can play, but one I generally ban, just so you know. So you've got dwarves, elves, halflings, and humans. Now, the majority of the party will have to be human. That's that's a rule that I will put in place. They will have to be, majority will have to be human. One person can play either a dwarf or a halfling. And that's it. So you'll have to figure out that out yourselves. Um... But it's just, it, it, the, like I said, the, the game's very human centric. Uh, it's not. It's not. It, the reason it, yeah. Well, well, of course, I don't hate being railroaded. <laughs> I just hate it when when you're in a open game and it's not open. I've said from the start that there is parts of it that are are railroady rooster. So yeah. So like the first part, but that should take a few weeks to get through. Um, mainly because you're on a carriage heading somewhere, so it is kind of you're on a railroad <laughs> metaphysically. So um, is there any questions that people want to ask? Oh, yeah, system. I should explain the system. So basically, it's a percentile-based system. So you roll a D100. If you look at your couch sheets that I've assigned to everyone, it's actually got all the macros on there. So you just hit the dice roll and it will roll it for you. Now, what you need to do is roll under the stat. So when you're doing like uh, an attack, you need to roll your weapon skill, which is WS on the thing, on the couch sheet. I'll just open up mm -hmm. Rooster's character. I've, so for example, I've put 45 in Rooster's weapon skill. So if I rolled that, I didn't succeed because I didn't get under 45. So you need to get under your stat to uh, okay. succeed on the D100 roll. So some skills will be nearly 50% chance of doing it. Sometimes it'll be less. Um, the stats are, oh, it tells you on there, but okay, uh, I'll go through these quickly. So we got, um, uh, so weapon skill, that basically represents your character's skill in hand-to-hand -hand combat, both with weapons and without. So if you're trying to punch someone or hit someone with a sword, Ballistic skill, uh, this is obviously your sort of bow skill and crossbows and anything involving range or throwing weapons or pistols, <laughs> basically anything that's a missile weapon. Strength, uh, this it basically represents your character's muscle and brawn. Uh, toughness, uh, this is your character's ability to withstand injury and disease and poison. So you're basically physical toughness and your ability to shake off things. Agility, basically it's your quickness, uh, manual dexterity and reaction speed. Intelligence is obviously your character's intelligence, insight and ability to reason. Willpower is your, it basically represents your character's mental toughness and resolve. And fellowship, basically it's your character's personal charisma, charisma skill and, and social skills. Then you've got secondary stats which derive from the first stats. 
Attacks basically represent the number of attacks you get per turn. Wounds basically represents uh, how much damage you can take before you become critically injured. Strength bonus basically it, it determines how much damage you do in melee combat. So if you hit someone, you look at your strength bonus and add that to the damage of the weapon. Toughness is basically, or toughness bonus is, uh, it, it's also derived from toughness um, and it's used to resist damage. Movement is your base land speed. Uh, I think it's done in inches on here. So, I mean, there is a conversion chart to change it over, but I generally don't worry about that. Magic represents your character's magical power. You probably won't have access to that because, um, because uh, unless you roll to become a magician or an apprentice wizard to start with. Um, and then we've got uh, fate points, which represent the character's luck to a certain extent. Uh, fate points can be used to avoid avoid certain death and um, stuff like that. But it, they they think I think once you spend them, they get burnt. They go. Uh, always did it does it I can't remember I think there's two versions I think there's like two there's like fate and fortune I just got to remember how it how it entirely works but we, we don't have to worry about that till, ne till next week so um, characters are completely random stats are random um, career is random and uh, everything is pretty much random uh <laughs> Some people don't like that. Some people do. I do enjoy fully random characters um, because it takes a lot of the pressure off the person to make a character. Um, also, being in the semi-dark ages, you don't really get to pick your career. You, it gets chosen for you. You're born into it, generally. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, well, we should. I think we should like discuss what people want to play and who they want to play. Just so you know, this game is probably the first part or the first like book is very city based so it's going to be very urban but some uh, in the second book which we won't come to till probably a while down the road um it does open up a bit more even more and and yeah so what do people want to play human okay i don't mind being a human no preference. Dwarf. <laughs> we all. Okay. I'm so shocked. Oh, oh okay. no! Just write in your racial sec racial section on your cat sheet. I think it's a drop down thing. I don't know where ogre came from, but uh, Ooh. Just put dwarf in it. Uh, I am now an ogre. Ooh, if I owned the stats, I wouldn't have allowed it anyway. But hey, it doesn't fit with doesn't fit with the Warhammer sort of setting really fine i'm also a skaven i'm an ogre skaven okay well that also would involve everyone having to be skaven um he could be skaven if i can be a rat catcher no okay comedic co comedy ensues yes comedy gold people <clears throat> comedy gold okay mm -hmm. so i generally i generally allow so rather than just rolling the stats straight up i generally allow people to like Roll a bunch of d the d10s that they need to roll, and then assign them how they want, um, uh, rather than like being stuck with the certain rolls. And I also allow uh, two dice, two re rolls if they want to. So um, we'll go around the table, and we'll get uh, people to start rolling. So I'm going to go anti clock cries again. So we will start with Lauren. Okay. So what I want what you to do? So you're going to play a human, aren't you? Yes. So, if you want to roll 2d10 eight times, roll 2d10. Okay. If you use the arrow on your keyboard, you can like just roll up again. There you go. Woo, 20. And a bunch of rubbish. Um, okay, now. Lots of 10. So you can re-roll, uh, you can re-roll two of them, which I'd say okay. would be the three and the five. So re yes. just push up again. 
Oh, oh, okay. So we'll drop the three. We'll keep the five. We'll drop the four. Okay. So you might want to just quickly write them down. If you've got a scrap piece of paper or just oh, I have, my, I have a notebook in front of me. So a five, a ten, a six, a six. Ten, a ten, a nine, an eight. Ten, ten, nine, eight. Twenty and a twelve. Okay. Each of them stats you want to add twenty to, and then assign okay. them. And then assign them to weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness, agility, intelligence, willpower, and fellowship. And you can assign them however you want. 9, 28, 40. And so there should be nine of these numbers? Yes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of these numbers, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay. Got it. I wrote one down once too many times, I think. Drop the lowest uh, one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go in. Okay. So we'll go to Claytor. Right. You're going to be a little bit different because you're a dwarf. Uh, dwarf so. In fact, I'll probably come back to you in a second. So Come back Jay, to me last. Everybody's a human. Deal so with them J first. Jay Wall, do you want to do uh, 2d10 eight times for me? Well, you might as well roll 10. You might as well roll it 10 times and then... Uh... What? Why did you do times that, 10? That doesn't, that doesn't work. work. Cries. I'll do it properly. Probably have the lazy way. Okay. Is it the lazy way? Yeah. Who do you turn? You can just hit up and get rid of the times 10. What do you mean hit up? Press up on your keyboard. I don't have enough power on my keyboard. Yeah, How do you not those, have... He's got one of those shit, like, oh, he's got one of those micro keyboards because he's just has to be, yeah. Oh... Uh... Control C, Control V. Alright, All right. drop the lowest two, add 20 to each of those, and then assign them to the eight stats. Uh, uh, 23 Skadoo. Also, you might want to discuss sort of what sort of area you want to go down whether you know someone wants to sort of like go down like the uh fighter -y sort of area or the fifi area or the ranger area or the the academic area there's four of you so one of each will be kind of handy uh kitten do you want to do the same for me please so uh how you do it slash r space 2d10, hit enter, and then use your arrow key to just go up. If you just push up on the arrow key, yeah. And 10 times. Yeah. Okay. Drop your lowest two. Which will be the seven and the five. And then uh, add 20 to them, and that will be your stats. And then assign them to your, your character. <coughs> Right, Kato, what you're going to have to do, roll 2d10 10 times, drop the lowest two, assign your stats, and then I'll add. I'll tell you what you're adding. Well, I'll tell you what. So drop the three and the five. Okay. So you might want to write this down or look at the cat or, or do you have access to the book still? Uh I, can. I did link it. I did link it. There it is. Okay. Got it. Right, if you see like do all start with like weapon skill thirty plus two D ten, blister skill twenty. Uh, like agility is 10 plus your 2d10 so assign your stats how you want but add those modifiers to those stats for me please oh I <laughs> I typed over all of them without adding any of the modifiers 
Uh, okay, doors. So, oops. I thought yeah, I just replaced it on the PDF. Okay, that's what I was looking for. No, 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 that's not the link. Nah. Gotcha. I can I can deal with this. Once you're all done that, let me know, and then we'll we'll crack on with the next segments. <laughs> oh, whoops. Okay. Okay, so just to reiterate, cover this again here. It's supposed to be all these rolls I had. You take these top eight, you add 20 each one, you plunk them right into this automatically. I didn't need mm -hmm. to add anything else to these. No, you had to, you'd you'd have to add 20 to them. Yes. Okay. But there were like a bunch of tens in there, so I'm just deleting ignore all the, of those. Ignore the putting... ten. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Then I uh, believe I've done this right. Huh. I think. No. All right. I'm good. Okay. Once everyone's at that stage, I'll go through the next parts. I guess I'm good. Okay. Jay Wall? Yeah, I'm done. Owen? I believe I'm done. Okay, so we're now going to be doing secondary stats or secondary profile. Attacks is one. Everyone has one attack. Okay, one attack. Wounds. Okay, so everyone needs to roll a d10 for me, please. Just one d10. <laughs> Lauren, you start with 10 wounds. Crimson, you start with 11 wounds. Jaywall, you start with 10 wounds. And we're just waiting on uh, Claytor to roll a d10. I did. I got a four. That was the first oh, one. Oh, because it was still part of your old string. So you did it first. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. you got a four. Four, you got 12 wounds. Gotcha. Strength bonus and toughness bonus should have automatically been worked out for you on your on your on your um, on the sheet, uh, which is the uh, which is the um, where it's, you've got two boxes on strength and toughness. The one mm -hmm. on the right is the toughness strength and toughness bonus. So do I add that to the wounds? Uh, sorry, no. Do I no? no do I add? Just... Oh. Don't add anything to the wounds. That's what you what you've rolled is what you get. Okay. Yeah. Um, movement. 
Uh, so Claytor, you've got a movement of three. Uh, that goes if you look on the sheet. It's got movement. Put three in there. And humans have got a movement of base movement of four. Magic point. Everyone starts with zero magic points. Zero insanity points. And fake points. This is will be another d10 roll. <coughs> Ooh. Oops. God damn it. So, Claytor, you get one starting fate point. J Wall, you get three fate points. And Kitten and Lauren get three fate points as well. Okay, and that is, uh, that's the start of the character, obviously. So, um, you may have to add additional skills. Um, if you look down for advanced skills, you may have to add it. But I'm going to start with the humans, as there's three humans in the party. They uh, need to pick, uh, uh, these are the skills you start with. So you start with Common Knowledge Brackets the Empire which is an advanced skill, I believe. So you need to add another skill to it. Empire. Okay. Uh, oh, no, done, done. All right. You also start with gossip which is a standard skill, so it's in the list up above the uh, advanced skills. Okay. You also get speak language. This is an advanced skill. Speak language, brackets, reek spill, which is spelled R-E-I-K-S-P-I-E-L. I will put it in chat as well. Point in here. <clears throat> Where the talents go? There we go. Right oh, spiel. Yep. If you the go, right if, spiel. If, uh, you if you if you scroll to the bottom. Uh, of the sheet, uh, there's talents. Uh, humans get two random talents, and you roll on table two, uh, two four. So yeah, so if you could all give me, if Lauren, could you roll? Well, everyone's going to need to roll d one hundred. Apart from Claytor, sorry Claytor. So yeah, so Lauren, can you roll me uh, d one hundred twice? Oh, if you okay. So fourteen is excellent vision. Then sixty-five is savvy. That's what you get for starting talents. Kitten, do you want to give me a D one hundred roll? Twice. Uh, you get resistance to disease. If you're having trouble spelling it, I will cut and paste it for you if you want the spelling. And then 32 is luck. And then J Wall, can you give me 2D100 rolls, please? I don't know how you did that. Okay, 82 and 31. 82. Suave and lightning reflexes. 82 is suave and... Okay, alright then. 31 is... Lightning reflexes. Alright. Claytor. Yo. Dwarf gains the following skills and talents. Common knowledge dwarfs. So you, if you look at the skill list and go to the bottom, you can add advanced mm -hmm. skills. So just add that. 
So, dwarf. Common knowledge, dwarfs. Okay. Uh, speak language, uh, Kazadil, which is spelled like that. Okay. You also get speak language reek spill. So you can speak fucking empireism. Uh what is it? Reek spill. It's uh if you look where I've written it's on it's on the uh roll, it's in the dice rolling thing. You can just cut and paste that. I only see the scroll up. Ah there it is, okay. Then you get <clears throat> get to choose it. Uh, yeah, you get to choose this. You get trade. You either get to choose miner, smith, or stone worker. Smith. Okay. It's also advanced skill, I believe. Sweet. Okay, talents. Scroll to the bottom. You get dwarf craft. All one word. Okay, Warcraft. Grudge born fury. Grudge born fury. Night vision. Uh. Crap! I forgot the end. Night vision. Resistance to magic. Fuck you and your magic. Get it. Stout hearted. Stout hearted. And sturdy. And sturdy. Alright. Right, now we need to roll for your starting career. Okay. <clears throat> uh, if you understand German, just so you know in Warhammer, if you understand German, you may pick up on some of the jokes in people's names. So, uh, yeah, yeah, ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. Kleine, ein bisschen. I can't speak a word of joy German. Uh, I can speak, actually, that's a lie. I can speak a very small amount. Right, so we're going to use the career compendium. Because that's got every single career going in it. But I'm just going to look at the roles that we need to roll on. This is going to be exciting. Come on, come on down. Yeah, I study Schwertfechten. Um, I must Deutsch sprechen. Yeah, it's very helpful. So we'll start with Lauren. What 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 so I'll give you so you can either roll on academic careers, common careers, criminal careers, ranger careers and warrior careers. Which one hmm. do you want to go for? Uh, well, does the group have anything? I like, probably not magic. 
Vasha doing clerk and magical stuff, so I don't know. Do does anyone else have anything that they would prefer to play? A, an idea of a type of class? Does someone want to be thiefy? Someone want to be magicy? Someone want to be all tanky? Come on, people. Because if you don't put it in oh. your thoughts, and then I just take whatever, and you're like, but I wanted to play that. It's like too bad. I'm, I'll probably be I, the tank. I can try something kind of deepy, I guess. Okay. J Wall, do you have a preference? No preference. Okay. Hmm. So, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to do something rangery then. Okay. Right. Give us a D100 roll then, please, Lauren. 53. <laughs> You are a hunter. Hunter. Kavir. Hunter. I will give you the stuff in a second. Um, in fact, okay. let me link you it. I'll bring it in chat. All right. Uh, not. Uh, I'll bring it in Dropbox. Uh, not Dropbox. In um, d and I'll bring it here. So this is the career compendium. <clears throat> and look up Hunter. Where you put your uh -oh. Where do you put your career shit? It's way up at the top. There's a spot for career. G H R J K L M N O P. Page one oh nine. Okay, um, J Wall, what did you want to be? What are the options again? Academic careers, commoner careers, criminal careers, ranger careers, or warrior careers. Let's do criminal. Okay. I thought that was what Kitten was doing, but okay. No, Kitten could do criminal, sorry. What are your other options? Uh, I'll do academic. Academic. Okay, give us a yep. percent of our role, please. You are a tradesman. Okay. Kitten, you was going to be a uh, criminal career, yeah? Uh, yes. Okay, give us a percent of our role, please. Or D100. 98. Damn. Uh, you, no, are a, you are a wrecker. Don't know what that is. No, but it sounds destructive. It sounds like it could be fun. It sounds like you're the muscle. <laughs> it sounds like it could be fun. And then, last but not very least, Claytor 22. 42, you're doing warrior careers, aren't you? Yep. You uh, I got a, the yes. You are a mil milit militant man. Militant man career, there we go. Militia man? I think it's militant man. Oh, I don't know. Spell like that. That's militia man. Is it? Okay. Oh well, fuck it, who cares? I got it close. <laughs> it's okay. Right. I'll jump back to this. So once you turn your character's career look at uh, the arranged alphabetically, then copy down the list of skills and talents onto your catch sheet. In some instances, you may be given the choice of two different skills or talents. Pick the one you prefer in each case. Sometimes you have the opportunity to gain a skill you already have through your race. You are allowed to take such skill twice. This provides a plus 10% bonus when you use the skill. Oh. See the rules for skill mastery on page 90 for more information. You could also cause an entry called trappings. Uh, again, copy these onto your catch sheet. The listed items are the equipment you start uh, your adventuring career with. You also get, regardless of career, the following. Okay, we'll get this all written down in a minute. So this goes to everyone. I don't know where you put the advance scheme. Uh, that's the only thing that's wrong with this catch sheet, is there's no place to put the advance scheme. Which is a bit of a shame. 
that okay? So you're gonna have to keep referring back to that page every now and then. So it might be worth, might be worth taking a screenshot, or I'll put it in something for you. Yeah, it's a bit of an oversight on this cat sheet. I mean, the cat sheet's really good, apart from, apart from there's no. Uh, do you round up or down in this system? What are, you, what, what, what are you asking for? Well, in the hunter profile, it says ballistic skill plus 15%. Uh, I'll explain. Don't add that to your stats at all. I'll explain how that works. Oh, okay. So do I add any of these things that are listed here? Uh, Just... Nothing in the... You don't add anything from the... Uh... You don't add anything from those like lists. Main profile, secondary profile. Yeah, okay. don't add anything from that at all. Okay. So just add the skills for now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, skills and talents is all you should be adding okay. to the cat sheet. Skills and talents. Got it. One of my skills is actually consume alcohol. Well done. You can consume alcohol a bit better than most. You you've developed a drinking problem. I, I am actually like a pirate who kills any survivors after I steal all their loot. So this sounds like a good problem. Yeah, I'm Whose phone's that? I uh, put it on mute. Sorry. I do have to. It's probably email from my sister that I have to read for my stuff later. But it can be on mute. Does this um, character sheet summarize skills or is outdoor? different from outdoor survival. Hang on, what? Um, so I'm looking here, I can take outdoor survival or sail. So I'm picking outdoor survival. Is that the same as outdoor or do I put outdoor survival down in the skills? Is it two separate skills? No, it says outdoor survival. Yep. says this but the uh, bullet box it just says outdoor so i don't know if that's just if they're shortening it or uh no the box is outdoor survival oh my book go bigger what's uh, uh you can make the book i don't hang on let me have a look Yeah, mine, mine's uh, when I look at yours is outdoor survival, but yeah, there's only one skill with outdoor attached to it. So yeah, so just okay. just click it as taken. Let me know once you're done. I've just realised we're probably over halfway there. Just saying. Uh, I'm good. Okay, and is, consume, um, so, is consume on the thing something different, or is that to consume alcohol as well? I just want to make sure I'm not having it chunky. Right? Yeah, mine says consume alcohol, so. Yours says consume alcohol? Okay, I'll click that. And then yeah. Yeah, mine only says consume. You probably can make it bigger. Hang on. 
Yeah, if you if you drag it out, if you drag the box out and the actual window it's in, you can actually make you can make it bigger. Okay, here it is. Oh, I see. I popped it out before I did that. You can pop yeah. it out. You can still pop it out, but you can still make it bigger. Yeah, if I pop, if you pop it out before stretching it in the thing, it doesn't stretch the rest. Oh, of the okay. Thing. Yep. Okay, that's a problem. I'm using Rooster's character sheet here as a, as an example. I pre 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 planned it. I like the idea of playing a hunter. I think this is kind of neat. Actually, I'm going to change that. <laughs> Secret signs of the ranger. Okay. Like hobo, hobo marks in the American South. Uh, maybe it will probably be more like uh, <laughs> tying a bush, like uh, uh, tying, tying like I don't know, like things, naturey things, like you know, sort of bending a branch or something, or laying some twigs on the floor, or whatever, or making a marking in bark or something. Oh, I'm just reading Tools of the Trade. Neat. What is the difference between orientation and rover? Sorry? Orientation and rover, what are those two? Because I can pick between one or the other. Are they talents or skills? Talents. Repeat them one more time, sorry. Orientation? or rover uh, orientation you have an instinctive feel for directions you rarely get lost and always know the direction of north you gain plus 10 percent bonus on navigation skills tests okay what's a rover and rover uh you're at home in the world you gain plus 10 percent bonuses plus 10 percent bonus on concealment and silent move skill test when in rural locations. Oh. What it, the bonus is ba the, when it says plus ten percent, it doesn't mean to your to the like based off your skill. It's based out of a hundred, so it's actually mm. ten. It plus ten to the actual like dice roll that you're doing. Okay. Uh, if you're interested, talents start on page ninety-eight of the second hand, uh, second edition rulebook.
Oh, I like this from the rule book under role playing hints for how to play a human. You should know how to play one of these. You live it every day. I have two traits. Okay. We'll take a break in eight minutes and then uh, go get some drink and have, uh, use the bathroom or whatever you want. I need drink. Probably shouldn't take longer than two hours to make a character, I would say, in Warhammer. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> we can even roll for random name generators as well. If you want dynamic sounded names, because it's going to be quite hard to pick names if you don't know dynamic. And dwarves, obviously, because, you know, dwarves are going to be a bit weirder. No offence, Clayton. Wow. I'm happy to roll everything. Okay, cool. We could do that while everyone else is filling things in, because I think I have it all down. All right, well, there's a few... F I'm waiting for everyone to get there so I can give everyone... Oh, the right. Everyone starts with the same equipment, so I'm going to read it out. Oh. And there's also some more dice rolling involved as well. Well, mm -hmm. one dice... Uh, yeah, one dice roll to work out how much gold you get. That might be important. I can't remember if this is... If they've... Uh, the only thing I can't remember is if they've... Is it if they metri metric this or is it still old money? Oh no, it's old money. Hey, so one gold crown is one gold crown is like uh, twenty silver shillings. Twenty, twenty silver, a silver shilling is no, oh, hang on, twenty silver shillings is two hundred and four brass, two hundred and forty brass pennies. Uh, one silver shilling is so yeah, sorry, one gold is twenty silver shillings, and a gold is also two hundred and four forty brass pennies. One silver shilling is twelve brass pennies. That's it. Good. Redecimalization. Old money. Not made. Ah, <coughs> 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 I have right. to remember, I want to buy a longbow in real life, but that's not something exactly cheap. But I do like archery. All right, so I'm I'm ready for the equipment. Is everyone ready? Yeah, sure. Ready. Okay, I think Jay Wall's already plastered ahead and done this, but 
Okay, so all characters start with this. Common clothings consisting of a shirt, breeches, and worn boots. Do you want to add this to your trappings? <coughs> a tattered cloak. Uh, a dagger tucked in a boot or a belt. Dagger. Uh, you get a sling bag or a backpack, your choice. And the backpack contains a blanket, a wooden tankard, a wooden cutlery set, and a hand weapon, whether it's an axe, club, sword, or whatever you choose it to be. And last but not least, a purse holding 2d10 gold crowns. So I need 2d10 rolls from everyone. You get no nine gold crowns. Both of you get nine gold crowns. I also get plus ten. Well, an extra d10 roll for being tradesman. Okay, Crimson, you get or Kitty, you get eleven gold crowns, and J Wall gets fifteen gold crowns. Right. I think we should go to break. Get some sure. Drink, and then we'll come back to do the last bits and pieces. Okay. Very. Right. All right. So, everyone, we'll be back shortly without a little intermission y thing. So, just bear with us. And we're back with intermission. So, I'll be back shortly. I'm going to go make a coffee. This will be fun. Apparently, I am a pirate who is no survivor because I don't want anybody to tell them that I'm dead. Nice.
everyone else is quiet and just looking at what they're looking at. But if you're in the chat still, and you're here during the break, just want to say hello. Hello there, chat. Hope you're doing well today. Hello, fellow players. Hello, everyone. For my character, I'm going to choose my single-handed weapon that came along with the bag that you get for free to be an axe. This is an axe that you could use to help clear a camp, but you can see that it's quite thin. So it's not really for splitting wood as much as it is for splitting skulls. But that is the nature of a multi-purpose tool such as an axe. Yes. Not an actual antique, but kind of fabricated based on the remains. However, I think that this is a cold steel version that someone bought, tried to clean up, rehaft, and then sell as original. But it was dirt cheap when I got it, so I got it anyway. Some assembly and repair required. Like I said, cheap. So that's just a little tidbit of education, kids. Take it from me, I know, because that's what I do with my life, yes. On another break, we can talk about daggers. But for now, anyone else who wants to yammer on about anything fun during uh, the rest of our break, while our gracious host gets his coffee, please do, please entertain. I've, I've got nothing. Nothing? Pants. Yeah, I've Pants. got it. Pants. <laughs> Don't wear them. They're evil. You want to buy uh, a pair of... Uh, a oh. nice pair of pants like Aladdin. And then don't go bald. Look, wow. Pants means something different in the UK than it does in the USA. So are you talking about underpants or trousers? You must define now. Trousers. There we go. All right. I don't know trousers. why we call them trousers and you call them pants. I don't. I, they, I, don't, they, I, don't I don't. They must come from. There must be a, de a deviation somewhere. It's because uh, we didn't want to stick to the Queen's English. <laughs> Rebellious I know, the dogs. I know the term cookie comes from the Dutch word. So it's Dutch yes. rather than English. Well, French. I think, in fact, French is biscuit, I think. Yeah, biscuit, dans le français. <laughs> it means uh, baked twice. Du Dutch, yeah, Dutch and German are uh, chicken. By the way, tabletop simulator is on sale for 10 bucks. Cool, I've already got it. Don't need it again. Uh, that was a hint, <laughs> hint at Lauren. Oh, hint, hint. Well, uh, there's that, and I want to get Human Fall Flat just because I think it's hilarious. I was going to say, I want, I want oxygen not included. I have no money until May, uh, March 2nd, so. Oh. They get busy don't flat in those eyelids. I do it, and I don't get shit, but yeah. Oh, I mean, I have not this. <laughs> I mean, I got my I got my luck already though. I had some amazing viewers help me out with my moving costs. So, Chable doesn't love me anymore. You're not a Kickstarter, that's why. If you were a Kickstarter called James, he'd give you love all day, and I'd say. Oh, hey, they finally updated wish lists, so it's easier to fucking move shit. So, just just for a back bit of background. The reason why I'm in love with Warhammer or Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay in general is because it was like the first roleplay game I ever brought with my own money. Oh, so there's wow. like a... It's not second edition, first edition, but that that is like... That's why I sort of always enjoy coming back to Warhammer. And it's not a particularly hard system, neither. It's quite straightforward. It's not complicated. 20 years ago, I had a friend who shoplifted frequently from Games Workshop. <laughs> that's yeah, easy that, to do. That, that probably wasn't particularly <laughs> hard, though. No, well, that's probably why they don't sell so many individual well, look, little mini packs of uh, uh, figures anymore. No, let me just say, in the, in, the, in the US, they cut it down to one person per shop, and you're like, well, great, he's distracted. 
Like, you just made it a hundred times easier, Games Workshop, for your lost product. Yeah, you do. You'd, we, when I was in university, and we'd go downtown, and we'd be all, you know, there'd be like a group of five or six of us, and then there'd be this one guy and stuff. And so as we went down to the, where this comic book shop was, there was a Games Workshop on the way, and he'd pop into there and meet us at the comic book shop later. And then he'd be like, hey, you want to paint a miniature? And he'd just hand them out. Oh, yeah, how much did you buy pay on that? These things are usually expensive. Oh, it wasn't a problem at all. Five-finger discount, yeah? Yeah. Three nine, three ninety nine. And when you live in Canada and it's winter and you wear big bulky parkas all over the place, Things end up in your pockets at Games Workshop, I guess. I know it's weird. So I Thanks probably just... have, a, so I have probably in a box somewhere. I still have Warhammer miniatures that someone gave me for free that I painted and didn't really know what to do with, but I have them. Why would you steal them if you didn't have any intention of using them? Oh, he played. Oh, okay. But then he would just like, oh yeah. Well, I guess he just grabs stuff. Is like, oh, so I have some undead skeletons that I painted with banners and all sorts of stuff because it's fun, but he didn't play Undead, so. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. It's weird, but it's It's Warhammer probably still it's massively deep. easy to steal from there as well nowadays. Especially if most of them have gone to, like Claytor said, one person in the store. Just take a friend in, get the friend to distract the uh, distract him. Uh, while, while he's distracted, you just fucking take as much as you can. You know, I don't want to play the game. I just like how little mini things look when they're painted and they're they're neat. That's all. Things right, in mini. Sh are shall shit. we go back? Sure. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'm just going to take us to this page. So, hi guys, welcome back. I'm keeping us on this page because uh, we've got the cameras and we've got a bit of the. Uh, you can see a bit of everything. So you can see the map box and uh, everything. So I'm going to keep us here for a bit, uh, which is where I've been keeping us for most of this session. Um, okay, so, um, so you've all taken, written down your stuff. You've all rolled your gold. The only, the next thing you need to do is you get a free advance on your um, on your career path. Oh. So. So your character is uh, not an absolute beginner. To represent previous experience, your character is allowed one free advance. An advance can is either a five percent increase to a characteristic on your main profile. So you see where it's got written stuff. If you if you look on your character, if you look on your career, <clears throat> you see where it's got like it's probably like got maybe under weapon skill plus ten percent or ballistic skill plus ten percent. Do you see all yes. that? Yes. Now, the ones that are blank means that that's that the career doesn't doesn't train in any of that at all so you can't take any if it's completely blank you can't take anything in that now you can you can spare you can take your free advance and take a plus five on a main ca a characteristic on your main profile or two an increasement of one to a characteristic on your secondary profile profile so for example um let me try and find uh let me try and find the career so where are you uh so for example you're a hunter aren't you so let's find yes. the hunter shit so many character sheets so many things <laughs> page 109 if that helps all right uh, <clears throat> so, for example, you've got Blister Skill of 15, Toughness of 5, Agility of 10, Intelligence of 5, and then Wounds plus 3. Now, what it means, okay, so it says you can take an increase of 5% to a characteristic on your main profile. What you would do on a main character sheet is you put a tick under Ballistic Skill, like in pen or whatever, and you'd okay. raise like your Ballistic Skill by 5, which would then be... You'd only have you can only take a further two raises on on ballistic skills uh, before that, that that part of the career is done, and then you can like do other things. Uh, so for the secondary profile, you could even choose to like take an additional wound. So you could like okay. take the wound and take a wound, uh, increase your wounds by one. 
Does that make any sense, or is it really confusing? It does. So I could add, so I can add five to my ballistic skill, mm -hmm. and then the next time I get an advance, I could add another five. And the next time I advance, I can add another five. But then I can't in this career ever add anything to yeah. ballistic skill. And then you need, and then you complete your career. So the way you complete your career is you do all these advances, oh, and then you can move okay. on to the, and then you can move on to a career exit. So for example, for you, animal trainer, you could head down to the head towards. Animal, animal trainer, bounty hunter, uh, charcoal burner, whatever that is, field warden, <laughs> kif band warrior, miner, scout, soldier, and targeteer. So you could head into any of those exits. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the whole point of this, the whole focus of this game is on the career, the career paths. Mm -hmm. So you can try and figure out where you want to go, and you can then mm -hmm. work out a way of getting there by okay. choosing the right well careers. So I think, well, I already have a high enough agility. Toughness and intelligence are pretty good. So it's either adding an additional wound to make me survive longer or more ballistic skill. But my ballistic skill is 30, so I'm going to add a wound. So I go from 10 to 11. Okay. That, uh, yeah. And now you can only take two more wounds, uh, two okay. more additional wounds. Obviously, right. if you go into a career, if you change career, and the ballistic skill is 15, you still can't advance. You need to get into a career that has mm -hmm. a higher ballistic, like a higher bonus on your ballistic skill. Okay. So yeah. if you went to one which was 20, you could then increase another 5%. Ah, okay. Okay, I got it. Ich verstehe. What about you, uh, what about you Kitty? Okay, so I can... What's your page number? I'm going to have a look. Uh, my page number is 234. So I can increase pretty much almost everything once, except for strength and intellect. Um, over the course of my career. So... I will take. <coughs> I will increase my fellowship since that's one of my. I'll actually I'll increase my toughness. Okay. Since that's my. Well, it's one right here. I'm gonna do my wounds page is two one three if you wanna look at it. You're a tomb robber. You're not a tomb robber. Tradesman, okay. Two one three at the bottom. Yeah, look at the top because yeah. it's one page out on, on this sheet. Uh what are you doing? Wounds. Wounds, okay. And last but not very least, Claytor, what page number is yours? Uh, 146. Okay, and what are you gonna take? Weapon skill. Okay, so it's an extra five in your weapon skill. So, does everyone understand how? Wait, is it five? Because it says 10. Yeah, no, that's or the maximum. Gonna... Okay, that's the maximum okay. you can take. So, it will be five, it's increments of five. So, it would be okay. Okay. So it will be you can take two advances in that, and that's as far as you can increase your weapon skill in that career. When you move on to the next career, what happens is you don't get all the skills and talents. You have to buy them at, at cost with experience. Okay. So, so once you pass this, it will be a, a, a considerably longer amount of time till you move on to the next career. But I think you'll be you'll be like buying raises every few sessions. I'll probably be handing out default like fifty or seventy five experience uh, per session. But I'll have to have a look at how much I'm supposed to hand out, and then you'll get a bonus XP at, at the end of every like chapter, I guess. Gotcha. Some may like give you like two hundred experience, and which is like two raises 
or more, depending on how well you do. Right. Um, so, so we just got to do some basic stuff now, which is I'm going to open up another page book. Where's the character stuff? I've got it somewhere. I've got so many fucking things that I've downloaded over the year, over the years. So how you organize them? You break them like into... under, under equipment. It says replacements and appendages. You can buy yourself wooden teeth for a false leg. Oh, nice. Well, you can lose you can lose body parts when you get a critical hit. If someone gets Makes a critical sense. hit on you, you could potentially lose a body. Uh, someone could lop your arm off. Yep, fun time. Uh, it, if they get you on the head, they could potentially, if they get a good enough hit, they could potentially cut your head off and you're dead. Jeez. Yeah, there's no replacement head under that section, so uh, try not to have that. Anyway, darn it! Don't, don't lose your head. I'm sure we can have it like Shadow of Mordor Orcs, where we just have a head stitched back on, you know, like put a bag <laughs> over it. <laughs> I swear to sure. God, I decapitated and decapitated them <laughs> so many fucking times. I hate the Nemesis system. How can you hate it? Don't you I just love those ne looks? Like, it's cool, but it's at the same time, like, I fucking lopped his head off. Although Fuck I you. did, I cut somebody entirely in half, and then I met them again. <laughs> like, we, uh, straight through the torso, right in half. And then I ran into fine. Them, like, ten minutes later. It's fine, it builds character. Build, it builds character. <laughs> The system isn't completely broken sometimes. No. We saved him. That 10 minutes you didn't see him? That was emergency surgeries. <laughs> Just like Sauron stitching him back together. Yeah. I gotta play that again. Found it. Was it page 26, James? No, no. It, it's, a, it's, an, it's a more advanced version. Oh. So... Um, so we'll start with, uh, Lauren first. Okay. Yes. So I, I'm assuming you're playing a female. Yes. I would okay. like to. Okay. Female representation, re uh, representation in gaming. Can you give me a D100 roll? This is for your name. Uh, 49. Who am I? Okay, can you can you give me another hundred percent of roll, please? Thirty. Thirty. You are Hildengund. Let me type it. Hildegund. Hildegund. Hildegund the Hunter. Oh, that's perfect. Alliteration. J Wall. I assume you're playing human. A male. 87. Sure. 
Okay, give us another percent of roll, please. 28. I think it's uh, Otfid. Do I have a certain Okay. I think I've got certain. I'm not sure if I've got certain names. Uh, Kitten, I assume you're also playing a, a lady? Yes. Well, I mean, I'm sure my pirate wouldn't be much of a lady. Okay, give us a percent of roll, please. Seven. Okay, give us another percent of roll, please. Frida, I think. And last but not least, our dwarven, our dwarven exchange student. <laughs> okay, let me just look. seven. Hang on, I've got to see what I've got to do. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, because it works no. differently. No. All right. The following table allows you to generate random dwarf names. Each name has two elements. You can make a name by simply combining them. All dwarf characters start by arriving on table CP eight, dwarf element one. Uh, for female characters. Then generate the second part of Okay, so you're seven mm -hmm. which is Bell B E L and then your second part which was seventy eight seventy eight is near N I R so it's Bell B E L near N I R Bell near. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Actually, I like that one. Actually, do is that it? Like, do I not? Yeah, get that is name? it. Uh, okay, uh, I'm, I'm just I'm... fucking Bell near. There might be like surnames. Oh yeah, there is. Here we go. Okay, um, Lauren, do you want to give me a D100 roll, please? A D100 roll again. Boom, forty-seven. Oh my god! Hang on, let me zoom in. Oh god. I'm gonna type this. Alright. Jutzenbach. 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 Okay. I got it. Uh, Kitten, do you want to give me a percent of roll? Sure. Jutzenbach. 70. Oh my god. God knows how you. Uh, Niederlitz. Is that pronounced right? Niederlitz. 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 Yeah. And then J. Wall. Five. Uh, Artswig. Which is A T Z W I G. Right, let me read of dwarfs because dwarfs don't have a surname here. Dwarfs and sometimes human also. There is no chart for dwarf surnames as dwarfs take a family name based on one of their parents. This is simply the, a first name with either son for male characters or sadot for female characters. You can use table C9 and CP10 to generate the first name of your parents, then apply the suffix as noted. For example, the daughter of Grim Grimkinar would have a surname of Grimkinar's dot. Okay, so, so we've got to generate your parents' name. So give us two D100 rolls, please. 90 and 80. 80. So 90 is L. 
I would have loved if you got the same ones. Oh my god, tell me about this, son. <laughs> you got 18. And then, what do we add? Just sun to it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Ulagana sun. <laughs> Bell near Ulagana sun. Okay, let's fit that on the screen. I love it. I like that name. Okay, human's birthplace. So we're going to start with... Generate a human. This is expanded roles. Okay. So I think we need to use the main rule book to gen generate this. Okay. Give us a so long, give us a D ten roll, please. Five. Ah. You are born in Ostermark. That's the that's the location you're born. And Ostermark, can you give me a D one hundred roll, please? Thirteen. Oh, I'm gonna have to zoom in. You are born in a capital city of uh Beechifen, I believe. Excuse my pronunciation. I'm probably. Bechafen. Yep. That's what you said. Bechafen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kitty, give me a D10 roll, please. <laughs> Two. Uh, Hockland is your. Region. Topland. Okay, give us a percent OO, please. Fifty seven is here. It's a village. Is it near water? Not sure. I can look on the map later. It would be a little odd if I was a pirate that was from a village in the middle of the uh, Maybe, but you may have moved. Okay. And I guess there's rivers usually not too far. Jaywall, give us a ten, D10 roll, please. That's not... Okay, seven. I hate how you do it. Reekland. Rick Land, give us a D100 roll, please. Oh, you got it, 47. I'm cutting down the rolls, James. Uh, okay. Um... Yeah, 7 and 40. You are born in Null. Which is a city. Not the capital, I and mean, it's not the imperial capital, it's all out of. But you're all in null. Okay, how about the dwarf? How do we figure out where the dwarf is born? I think he just rolls on his. I think he just rolls in the main book. Probably. Dwarf's first place. Give us a D100 roll, please, Kator. 65. Okay, you're born in the world, Ed. You're born here. Karak Kadin Kadrin Kad Kadrin Karak Kadrin. Cool. Okay. Height, weight, age, previous career, current, the, where is that added? 
think so. Mm. Is that something that doesn't? Ha oh, it's not on the cat sheet. Uh, you can just add it to like edit and edit to your bio info. Okay, um, we'll roll on age as well now. Actually, let's do it. Let's do it properly. So let's do height. So dwarf. Claytor. Roll yes. me a d10, please. Four. You are four foot eight inches. Yay. Well, I think uh, I pop you up now. Lauren and oh, Lauren yeah. and uh, Kitten, can you give me a D10 roll, please? One D10, a two. Okay, Lauren, you are five foot three inches, and Kitten, you are five foot seven inches. J Wall, can you give me a D10 roll, please? You are. Six foot. Six foot. Yeah. Wait. Dwarf, give us a D10 roll, please. Uh, D D100. Ignore that. D100. I got a 10, too. Oh, 65 again. Are you 145 pounds? I'm fat. You, you are a dwarf. Most of that will yes. be muscle. Okay. Uh, Lauren and Kit, Kitten, give us a D20 roll, or Kitty. One day I'll get names right. D20? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, D100. Okay. D100. Sorry, everything's D... Oh. Never. <laughs> yeah, it's like D20. D what? 58. Take for 10 and take for 1. <laughs> uh, you are 155 pounds. Oh. And 15... Uh, Kitten, you're 130 pounds, and J Wall. 11 stone. Oh, oh well. 35. You're 145. 145. Yeah, alright. Yeah, he's, he's looking at the book as well. Hair colour. Dwarf, give us D10 roll. No. 10. Uh, you've got black hair. And for your eyes, give us another D10 roll, please. 2. Uh, you've got blue eyes. Okay, Lauren, give us two. Yes. D give us a D10 roll twice, or just roll two D10 like Jay was being lazy at seven and nine. You got brown hair and purple what eyes. With what color eyes? Purple. Purple. Ooh. Uh... Kitten, same again. Two D10 rolls, please. You've got dark brown hair and three blue eyes. J Wall. Wait, what? What was How that? Did you roll? Oh, it's... blue eyes. Yeah, blue eyes. Okay, I heard three blue eyes. Seven. You've got brown hair. Brown and green eyes. Green eyes. Yep. Uh, distinguishing marks. Okay, uh, Lauren, can you give me a D100 roll, please? Whoops, click there. 1D100. 15. Uh, you have a scar. Ooh, a scar. Can Could it be anywhere I want it to be? Uh, these do have no effect on your characteristics. They're purely cosmetic. Minor pox marks, strange teeth, warts, and other small distinguishing disfigurements are completely normal in the Warhammer world. Indeed, folk without them are often viewed as unnatural and suspicious. However, Scar on my chin. There elves, we go. El elves, however, seldom possess these types of distinguishing marks. Yeah, so, Kitten, give us a, a D10, D D100 roll, please. 33. You've got a nose ring. Sweet. And Jay Wall. You've got a missing now. And Claytor. D100. Yes, please. 58. Uh, you've got a lazy eye.
Okay, number of siblings. Uh, Lauren, give us a D10 roll, please. Ten. Ten. You've got five siblings. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of mouths to feed. Um, your siblings have a 50, 50 chance of being male or female. If you like, you can roll careers for your parents and siblings on the table of two to five. Right, let's not bother doing that. You've got five, no. five other siblings. Uh, Kitten, give us a D10 roll as well, please. Five. You've got two other siblings. J Wall. Eight. You've got four siblings. And Claytor, D10 roll. Six. Six. You've got one other sibling. Star sign. Uh, these star signs have no effect on your characteristics. They are purely, purely of use to astrologers, witches, and common con men. Most folk within the empire are at least aware of their birth star, though not all are convinced of their relevance. Uh, Lauren, if you'd like to give me a D100 roll, please. Oops. D100. 90. Uh, Rayar's Cauldron, I believe, is what it is. It's a si sign of mercy and death and creation. Me sign of mercy, death, and creation. Mercy, death, creation. That's how it's spelled as well. I've just cut it straight in. Uh, okay. Kitten, do you want to give us a D100 roll, please? Eighty-seven. Uh, same again. You're born under the same sign. Rayar's cauldron. J wall. Forty. Uh, Grungin Grungi's Baldrick. Gun yeah, Baldrick. Grungy's Baldrick, sign of martial pursuits. And then Claytor. D100. Mm -hmm. what? 61. Uh, the dancer. I'll be your private dancer. The sign of love and attraction. Damn right. I'm a sexy, sexy drawer. Okay, let's roll for age. Lauren, okay. roll D100, yes. please. 77. Uh, you are 31 years old. Oof. Spend a long time feeding those siblings. Jeez. Kitten, a lot. D100, roll, please. Seventy-three. You are thirty years old. Claytor. I mean, J. Wall. Sorry, I forgot J. Wall because I'll do humans first. I'm a human. I'm a racist. No, not really. Eighty-seven. You're thirty-three. And Claytor, roll me the one hundred as well. No. I just got. Look I don't at want anymore. I've got to look at a different avenue. Oh, I see. I see how it is. Yeah, I'm just. I just got to move something. my eyes, you see. 36. 36. You are 75. I'm a baby. Is that it? Is that it? I think. Deity. Yeah, I think that is it. Do we have a deity? Uh. De deity, you can probably pick if you want to. Not everyone is massively religious. Most humans would probably even follow Sigma, or, or, or depending if you're born in the um, uh, near. Um, oh my god, my brain's fucking gone. Uh, if you're born in Middenland, then you might follow the um, Uric. Is it Uric? I think it's Uric. 
Ah, Siggy is fine. Can I be a follower of Slanesh? No. <laughs> you wish. Ugh. Nice. Yeah, I think that's it. Literally, I think that is literally us done. Cool. Oh, fantastic. Um, if you want to during the week, if you have time, I mean, you can spend your gold to buy some equipment before you go ahead and start playing. Um, try not to spend all your gold because that will be gold that you're going to be using in game as well. Uh, I've been attacked. I'm sorry. There's also. 10 questions on page 21 of the rule book which is 23 on the pdf uh where are you from what is your family like what is your social class uh what did you do before you became an adventurer why did you become an adventurer how religious are you who are your best friends and worst enemies what are your prized possessions who are you loyal to and what do you love and hate you if any of you want to answer them it would be great i might hand out some additional xp to, uh, to to help do that. Um, this is where I will shine. Um, other than that, yeah, uh, think of a description for your character. Try and think of some like quirky things for your personality and stuff. Maybe um, not too quirky. Let's not end up mm -hmm. with Belfaz. <laughs> what's wrong with Belfaz? What's, Roberto. What's what's, what's, what's right with Belfaz? Yeah, everything's right with him. He is a he's a gnome. Why? There's nothing wrong with that. Gnomes do are exaggerators. I mean, Carl Glitter Gold is enough of a description to be like, yeah, gnomes are fucking nuts. Um, but yeah, just just remember this: it will be a pre-written adventure campaign. Um. <laughs> It could, you know, if we keep coming back to it, it could be something that could go on for years. Um, uh, it might, I mean, hopefully when they release 4th edition, which is supposed to come out this time, this some point this year, uh, I will we'll be buying that as quickly as I can. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, I look forward to playing this because I haven't played it in some years. And I miss playing it, to the honest truth. It's quite easy. Like I said, it's literally all percent of worlds. Um, I will just I will go over some extra things next week if needed. Just remember to follow every avenue that you can. There will be um, there will be investigation involved. Uh, so yeah, just just don't give up and enjoy yourself. That's all I that's all I'm going to ask. Just enjoy okay. yourself and have fun. Oh, absolutely. If, if we get to a certain point and we're close to actually finishing the adventure, like we're only, you know, if, if Rooster come, when Rooster comes back, what we'll do is I'll get Rooster to roll up a character and we can just finish off that section and then move back to D&D. Because &D. there's no point just leaving midway in, in part of a pre-written adventure because yeah. it would be confusing to come back. If everyone's cool with that. Yeah, sure. Alright, cool. Should I, should I practice a bit of the German accent for my Hilde character? Yeah. Or are uh, you opposed to that? Well, I assume that everyone will just hear themselves in English. That's the way I would assume it. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if the dwarf wants to have a Scottish accent, you're quite welcome to. Or <laughs> <you're> <laughs> to no, no stereotypical dwarf Scots. Thing. No. No. In this, in this, in this, in this, in this world, they're all Welsh. Ah, oh, perfect. What if he's South African, eh? <laughs> Sounds American to me. James. That stereotype of dwarf. Yeah, I'm very sorry that we do not want to stereotype the dwarf. What I might do is while we're 
while we're <laughs> off, if none of you haven't done it, which some of you might have done, uh, I might go through your advantages and attach like the stuff to your advantages. Like, you uh, not move advantages, that talents. I've already done. I went through that. Okay. Yeah, I went through that. I've, as far as I can tell, I have adjusted everything per the descriptions in the it? book for all the talents. I don't have my luck. Oh, yeah, you need to do luck. I what does luck give you? Oh, you? Yeah, the most in uh, things go your way. You gain an extra fortune point each day. All right. Okay. That's that's. So there's fate and fortune points. So f fortune points are ones that you can spend. I think you can re-roll dice with fortune points, but they're equivalent to your fate points. But when you burn your fate points. I don't know, and I think they regenerate after every twenty-four hours. But I'll I'll check that for next week. Um, I just I, mean, I, know the, I know the rules, but I just need to double check on some of the smaller rules. I wonder if I could. Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna yeah. look them up. But yeah, you don't need. Uh, I'll. Um, as you can see, there's lots of. I've done lots of work uh, involving handouts and everything, which you probably can't see. Uh, nope. You should all be able to see this one as well. This Adventurers one? Wanted? Yes. Yeah. I saw that one. So this is where the game's... This is what draws you all together. This is going to be the, the linchpin, I guess. So Morgan. despite the, the fact that it says uh, no laggards, cowards, or dwarves Ignore need the dwarf. Ignore the dwarf bit. <laughs> no. Well, they might, just dress him, they, they might dress him up as a small human. I can put them, put them, right. them, um, them, them, them. Well, I think that's it. I, I think that is. I think that is us done for the first oh. well, session zero. So, right. um, so do you want to? Should we do some shout outs? All right. I think we already did the shout out. I can't understand you. It sounds like you've got a cock in your mouth. <laughs> I swear, God, you bald motherfucker. What if he does? Okay, so <laughs> do you want to give yourself a shout out? I'm Clayton22. You can follow me on Clayton22 on Twitter and the Twitch. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much me. I'm here two days a week. Mm -hmm. He likes being here. I apparently like being here. It's not so bad. Thanks. Jay Wall? You're welcome. I debated a German accent, but I thought I wouldn't offend anyone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm J all seven Z. I stream sometimes, like I said before. Follow me, J all seven Z. Yeah, there you uh, go. So is all the stuff information I've got completely out of date now? Streams uh, on weekdays, seven p.m. GMT, four to five I mean, that's hours. For, that's for Weekends, plan. Weekends, twelve p.m. six to twelve hours. Tuesday, seven thirty p.m. GMT, co-op with Tegan. I mean, it's still that. It's just everything apart from the co-op is if I feel like it. You can add a caveat if you want to say when he feels like it. I can't bother. That will be how it is. Whatever. Kitten? Hi, I'm Kitty. Um, I stream when I can right now. Uh, I work full-time as well, so unfortunately... I don't. And it's customer service, so I don't have dedicated days to stream for streaming. Uh, I am a variety streamer, so I'm currently trying to play Shadow of War. Uh, however, I'm in the, just completed a new, so I'm trying to get back into that. Uh, if you are like to cook, I'm also potentially looking into trying to start up a cooking stream. Uh, come up with a lot of interesting recipes, so maybe I can share this with some of you guys. Lauren. Hello, I'm Lauren Danger on Twitter, at Lauren Danger, or Sword Academy CGY, because I am the assistant martial arts instructor. That's a promotion for me. Uh, for actual historical sword-based fighting, so I help teach that now as well as study it. I'm also a leather worker on Etsy, Danger Craft Works. This is a beautiful purse that I've made since the last time we were streaming. Look at that wonderful hard shell adventure purse. Look at that suede lining, heavy duty strap. 
things like that are on my Etsy. So people can go there. Uh, my plans to stream talk shows about martial arts and things like that are delayed because I needed car repairs. So I can't buy the microphone and camera I need, but hopefully by April, I should have that set up. As well. You might not want to downgrade your internet then. What? You might not want to oh, downgrade well, your internet. I'm going to, I'm going to call and complain and they'll give me a discount without downgrading the internet. Well, I don't want to pay a hundred dollars just for the internet. I can drop it by $20 a month, what I have to pay and still have good streaming, but I just can't use five devices at once. That's all. all right, cool. That sounds terrible. So don't forget Welcome guys, to Canada. Don't forget to give Rooster also a little follow, give yes. him some support and love, send him some flowers. I don't know, chocolate, if he's allowed chocolate. Send him some diet send him, send him some vodka, he's gonna need it because he can't take send his him uh, rooster. regular pills. Because he's got to prep for surgery and all of his uh, normal painkillers are out of his system. So he could use alcohol. So if you have a way to send alcohol to wherever he lives in Texas, uh, do it. So Sunday. So our next game is on Sunday. That's the next stream that I'll probably be doing. Well, I should be doing on Sunday. 8 p.m. we start Deadlands. That is also another filler game that we'll come back to once Rooster's back and everything mm -hmm. sorted. Uh, we it will be uh, obviously Claytor, uh, Claytor, Weefs, Potato Fishy, and Hooperist, who's joining us. Um, and then when Rooster comes back, we'll we'll figure something out what we're going to do. Um, but yes, Deadlands, check that out. That's going to be fun. That's like my favourite RPG ever, and probably will be my favourite RPG ever for a very long time. Um, should be a lot of fun. We're going to be doing character creations. It will be another week zero. Um, they're going to have to make the characters using a poker deck. So that should be fun. Watching them draw random cards and see what they make. Um, but yeah, 8 p.m. Uh, is when we will be starting that. So please check it out. Um, then uh, Tuesday we'll be doing Exalted at, at midnight, my time, which is technically Wednesday morning. Um, and uh, keep keep check while we we'll tr while we're trying to get things sorted with our Numenera game, and while I'm trying to sort out this Pirates game, uh, Seventh Sea game that fucking the gem just disappeared, completely vanished off the face of the planet. So <laughs> yeah, that got completely delayed. It was supposed to start soon. So yeah, um, but yeah, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for rolling their characters i know it was um just rolling you didn't really need to think much uh, i think that worked out pretty well for time yeah, as well it, it was yeah. considerably quicker than most other games that we, i think we played you just don't have to okay, forward yeah. to it oh, yeah. <laughs> sometimes uh, it's nice not to think sometimes yes sometimes we will see you all all of us will see you all next thursday Bye. I'll see you Sunday. As we actually start the Enemy Within campaign, Volume 1, Shadows Over Bogenhofen. Ooh. Shadows Over Bogenhofen. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> like, just, so it's classy. Schatten über Bogenhofen. Yeah. I'll be the same. Oh, boy. I'll be the same. Let's find someone.